Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be installing a Moog wheel hub assembly. All right, kids, today's patient is actually Adam's truck, who's behind the camera, 2005 Dodge. Uh, he came in a few days ago. He's like, hey man, I think I got something going on in the front end of my truck. So took her for a little drive and uh, it was a little bit worse than what I expected. And here's what we've got. So if you're looking for a wheel bearing to be bad, obviously if you've got something going on in the truck, drivability changes, you always want to try to get your truck up on jack stands and, and, and look for these components because these are your steering and your suspension components. These are the things that can take your life if you let them get too bad. Um, if they've gone bad. So wheel bearing, first thing that you want to do to check a wheel bearing, jack it up and just give her an old back and forth on the tire. That is really, really bad. That's a, that is a bad bearing. If that bearing separates at that, at that point, I mean, you're really, you're looking at a lot of damage can be done there. So what we're going to be doing today is where we're going to be re, we're going to be, uh, installing a Moog wheel hub assembly on this 05 Dodge. So we'll go ahead and get started with our installation. When you're ready to tackle your wheel hub assembly on a Dodge truck, first thing that you're gonna wanna do, obviously, is you're gonna wanna get the truck uh, up and on jack stands. I suggest to put both uh, sides up on jack stands. Safety, and then I'll show you when we're removing our bearing why it's critical that you do that. You're also gonna need to remove the tires off of both sides. Even if you're not gonna do both sides, you wanna make sure that you re remove the tires off of both sides. And that's just because when we go to press the bearing out, we're gonna be turning the truck uh, be turned wheel from left to right and we're actually going to use the truck's power steering to push the bearing out which I'll show you in this you're going to need for full range of motion range of movement what is it Adam a range of movement range of motion full range of motion yes full range of motion yes yeah uh, articulation is good too so you're going to need you're going to need full movement on from on side to side here so let's go ahead and remove the wheels all right, first step in removing your wheel hub assembly is you want to go ahead and get your ABS cable disconnected from all of the holders that follow it up the brake line through here and then disconnected at its point where it connects to the truck. Again, this is an 05 Dodge four wheel drive. A word about that while I'm working on this too, watch your wheel hub assemblies when you're purchasing. You want to make sure that you purchase the right wheel hub assembly, the right year truck. Uh, you also want to make sure that you pay attention to that you're, if you've got a four-wheel drive truck that you're ordering it for a four-wheel drive or if you've got a two-wheel drive truck you want to make sure that you're purchasing for a two-wheel drive because there is a difference in them on most truck platforms. Uh, all of them that I know of really. Our hub that we get from Moog is going to come with a new ABS sensor so that's why we are attacking these today. That was a helicopter that just rolled by and that's brought to you by the United States of America. Thank you for your service. I'm going to move past the camera here, pop this out of the fender wheel. That gets us to our connector. Watch those things, they can get brittle on you. All right, and then that fish is back through those lines behind the brake lines there. So find a, find a wide spot in the brake lines and just kind of fish it through. fish your wire out. When you're working on this, make it easier on yourself as well. I need to talk, I need to talk about this. Turn the wheel in a direction that gives you access to everything. Don't work with it as the wheel straight on. Try to work with it, you know, where you've got access to it. So now what we want to do is we want to remove the brake caliper. We're just going to remove the two bolts that hold the brake caliper on, keeping all of our hardware intact, trying to keep our brake pads in. 
if they fall out you want to look at the orientation of them when you take them out and then we'll just hang it up here on the spring out of the way If the brake caliper does not come off, like this one, you will have to compress the caliper. We'll show you how to do that. All right, so for you guys at home, we're just gonna be using the C-clamp to compress this brake caliper just a little bit. So what we wanna do here is we wanna go ahead and slip it into where you're touching anything other than one side of the caliper and then grasp against the caliper. And I'm just gonna try to do one side of this and see if I can't cheat this. And get enough relief to be able to get it out. Real easy on this. Doesn't take a whole lot. We're just trying to get the piston compressed just a little bit. So a little bit may be all we need. We don't want to damage the brake pad either. So go slow. Make sure you don't push fluid out. Let's see if that heats up. That ought to do it. We're going to bend these tabs down here on the holder so we can get the caliper free. Zip. All right. Now what we'll do is we'll get us a piece of wire and we'll just hang that up out of our way. All right, we're going to go ahead and remove the carrier now. Um, two bolts on this, 18 metric on this Dodge. Just go ahead and bust them loose. They're usually tighter than all outside. So. And we'll go ahead and remove them. Got to do it the old, old fashioned way here. Kind of watch your orientation on your carrier. I left my brake pads in, so I just go ahead and lay that out there. This truck really needs brake pads, but we're gonna save that job for another day. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and just slide our rotor off. On this truck, they just slide off. Some rotors are uh, bolted on or whatnot, but this on this truck, just slide the rotor off. As you can see, there's some shrapnel here. So when this bearing started coming apart here, it started to emit some shrapnel. A bit of tin there. We're gonna go ahead and remove our castle nut and the washer now. So what we'll do is go ahead and get our cotter pin Straightened out. And then I just use inch and three quarter on the nut. Use the fastest way to zip them off. <laughs> That's this hub's way of saying, I'm gonna fight you to the death.
our castle nut that was on the front of that we had to cut away because we had to get the uh, we had to get the torch wrench out to get this thing off. Um, it was a bad deal, so the castle nut is not supposed to be that tight. But that's a that's a conversation for a different day. So now what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to press the bearing out on the Dodge front end. Now this works for just about all the model Dodges that I can think of that we've come across. We've got the four bolt um, that holds the wheel hub assembly in. This will work. Um, Another one of our famous shout outs to Snap-on Tools, but Snap-on actually makes this tool. It's, it's a part number DHP1. You can use any solid slug of metal, and I'll show you what that is. I've, uh, we also have done it using sockets. You can actually, um, you, can, you can take a socket, you can turn to press the bearing out, you can take a socket and push the socket between the yoke and then the, uh, and then the axle here, and turn your wheel with the truck running, power steering, and what that'll do is that'll push the that'll push the bearing out. But we like this, this is just a little bit easier. It's not as hard on the U-joint yokes. If you're in a pitch, that other way will work. So to get the bearing out, we've got the castle nut off the front and we're gonna loosen up these four bolts that are holding the hub assembly in. Go ahead and loosen all four. They're 18 metrics on this particular truck. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen them up. And what I do is I'll loosen this and I want to make sure that I keep I leave plenty of thread in here. So I'll loosen the bolts up till they're just about flush with the hub assembly right here. You can kind of see that. So and that gives us a, a good good thread contact in here so we don't have to worry about stripping the threads or bending anything and it'll help us to get started this. So go ahead and go around and do loosen up all four bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna show you how to push the bearing out with this. Now what you're doing here is you're gonna actually be starting the truck and you're gonna use the truck's power steering to push the bearing out in conjunction with our handy dandy tool, whatever you decide to use here. And once you see us do this, you may come up with a way to do it on your, on your own. That's fine, just be safe in what you're doing. Uh, you know, don't do anything stupid. So, all right, first thing we're gonna do is I wanna to talk to you about why we, we left those threads in there again positive good thread engagement here it keeps you from tearing up the threads on the bolts themselves i just take it out to where they're flush with the the, the uh, hub assembly uh, and then we start pushing so the bolts loose on the back here all right hunter go ahead and uh turn it all the way to the right please sir all right so this is a t obviously you see now this is a two-person job hole right there so what we're, I'm gonna show you real quick is what we do is we take this tool and we actually put it on the head of the bolt, the bolt that attaches the uh, hub assembly to the yoke. We actually put this on the head of that bolt. And then what we're trying to do is when he goes to turn the wheel, we're gonna turn it and then the, the tool is gonna come to rest up against the axle yoke here. So don't start it, Hunter, but just turn it just a little bit so we can show them where it's gonna be, where it's gonna be pushing from. Go ahead and turn to the to the left. Sorry. All right, right there. So you want to make sure that you're clearing your U joint yoke here. So I'm gonna let Adam get in there and get a shot of that. Give you some light there. Yeah. So you can kind of see where the tool is. All right. Now's when the fun starts. What we'll do is we're gonna start the truck real easy. Make sure obviously your truck's in park. If it's in manual, it's in neutral. Again, this is one of those things where just use some common sense here. All right, go ahead and start it up, Hunter. All right. Now we're just gonna put a little bit of a little bit of power steering pressure on this to get this bearing. We're gonna be looking for separation right here. All right, turn it left, Hunter. All right, oh ho. All right, to your right. Now make sure you, all right, ho. Make sure you don't get your hands in there. Be careful what you're doing. All right, Hunter, to the left. All right, good. All right, push. No, 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 no. Hunter went the wrong direction, kids. All right, left, Hunter. Left, 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 left. Ho. All right, to the right. All right, now, ho, ho, Hunter. So what we want to do now is we want to go to the other side. And we're just going to keep working it till the bearing comes out. 
So back up against the bolt. All right, to the right, Hunter. Right, 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 right. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, push. Keep right, 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 right. Hope left. To the right. Push, push, push. Right, 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 right. Hold, hold, left. Hold, all right, right. Right, 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 right. Push, push, right. Right, 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 right. Hold, left. All right, hold. Shut it off. All right. So you kind of get the gist of it now. What we're going to do is we're going to do the dirty work for you here. I'm going to move the bolt out just a little bit more, and we're going to push the bearing on out. We'll come back in when the bearings get ready to fall out. All right. So final touches on getting your bearing out here. We've got all four bolts out of it. You want to make sure that you use a soft face mallet and keep the axle back in there. The axle spline in the hub. So that's another thing that kind of holds it there. That's just one more thing for you to kind of struggle with, but that's really it, man. It, uh, Keep it working it. This is a piece of there it is. old bearing off. We've got everything cleaned up. The way to clean this up is you don't want to use something that takes material out of this hub. What you want to do is I use a scotch bright pad, take a scotch bright pad, work through it real good because that's not going to remove any material. Just keep hitting it with brake clean, cleaning it up. Um, when we go back with it, I just use light lubricant. I just put a little bit of uh, WD-40 on it, penetrating oil to get you back in there. Instead of using grease or something that can get slung out onto the, onto the tires, I try to use something that'll uh, not going to be a permanent thing there. So what we do is we got to get our dust shield up here and I'll take a bolt to just kind of hold one end of our, our dust shield up just so it's just a little bit less aggravating on you. Sorry. Let's use two. How about that? Then we'll go ahead and put our hub assembly on. Take that little piece of shipping collar on there. And you want to go ahead with your ABS sensor and try to pull as much of it through as you can there. As you're going. to start it on the hub of the shaft here. There we go. Make sure that your ABS wire is not in a pinch. I like to go ahead and lay it into that first catch there, just because, and there we go. Go ahead and start our two 18 metric bolts that we had. All right, 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna get the rest of these bolts started and then we'll cut back and tighten them up. All right, once you've got all four bolts in, I go ahead and put my castle nut and washer on. And I don't, I don't draw the bearing up. Some people may, I just, I just don't draw it up with, with the bolts. What I like to do is I like to take a soft face mallet, something that's not gonna hurt the studs and I'll go ahead just hit around it with a soft face mount. I'll see how far I can drive it in. Most of the time, if you've got that yoke good and clean, it'll dag on near go all the way back. And I like to take the the axle nut with it as I go. Keep pulling it up like that. And then I'll hit the bolts. And I'm not pulling on it. I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just tightening as I go. And you'll know once you get the bearing seated, once you get the hub seated, when you get it seated, then you can go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, drawing our hub up, I, everything is flush. What we wanna do now is we need to torque everything down. So first step is torque down all four of your wheel hub nuts to 150 foot pounds. And then your axle nut is actually gonna to go to 263 foot pounds. So we're gonna get all of this torque down and then we'll come back with the rest of the assembly. We've got everything torqued down on our, on our hub. We've got everything flush. We've got our wire through. So we're ready now to just go ahead and finish up our installation, which we're gonna kind of breeze through this. This side, we decided to go ahead and we're gonna do new brakes, uh, new brake pads. I've turned, had the rotors turned and we're gonna do a new caliper on the side, but we're gonna finish out here. So go ahead and slip your rotor on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our brake carrier on here. Go ahead and slide it over. I've got my new brake pads in. I've checked them for travel. We're good to go on that. We'll just go ahead and tighten that up. And now we've already put our brake caliper on. And what I did there is I had to put a new brake caliper on. We've got videos on how to do that. So I just uh, I just spared you the boredom on that. We went ahead and tightened everything down. When you put your brake calipers back on, make sure you put a little bit of grease on the caliper bolts on the inside of here so you get good slide on the brake caliper. Everything else is good here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, route our route our brake or our ABS line through. One thing about Moog, the Moog has on this brake line, they've actually got the, the grommets in just about the right place on every one. So they do a really good job on just little details like that on a part really make a difference um, to me. So that's what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna go ahead and just put these grommets in all the way up through and just about every one of them matched up perfectly. I had to move that one just to fuzz. No big deal. On that. And then we go back into this grommet, which is a clamp. I'll come back to that. And then, remember we route this through here, behind the brake lines. like so and then check our connection right there make sure we're clean and then we will go ahead and hook the two up and bring our latch back down and then tuck it back in here and put the fish push pin in back at the fender wheel now 
I'll close that up. There we go. So there's that. All right. And that's got us pretty well done there. Can't really even tell anybody's been here. Um, so a couple of words on this. When you're working on the brake rotor, it's just something I, I do, I don't ever think about talking about. When you're working around the brake rotor, one thing I like to do, I like to put a lug nut in there. It just holds the rotor back and keeps it from moving your brake pads on you all the time. Then another thing when you're done here, I like to take the rotor, brake clean, clean the rotor off, get all the oil spots off of it. But that's it. All you do from here is go ahead and put the wheel back on. When you set the truck back down the ground, make sure you pump the brakes. If you're retaining your old caliper, pump your brakes really slowly, let every, everything seat back there and you should be fine. If you put a new caliper like this one on, obviously you're gonna have to bleed the system and we'll do that. So uh, another good trick while you're here, you're wide open to get to your grease fittings, go ahead and grease your upper and lower ball joint fittings. If they've got grease fittings on them, if they've been changed, Grease your U-joint, if your U-joint's bad, change your U-joint out. Change ball joints if you need to. Tie rods, don't forget to check your tie rods. So there's a lot of things that can be done here when you have a wheel bearing failure, which is common. Wheel bearing failures are very, very common. It's gonna happen to you at some point. There's a lot of stuff that you can do on the truck that's preventative maintenance, and it's good to do it right now while you've got it tore down. So if you've got a question about Moog products or uh, or any of our other installation videos, please give us a call, like and subscribe to our channel, and, and as always, thank you for watching.